Avi, you and I both started out with an interest in philosophy. You went into physics, I went into neuroscience, then did other sort of things. Uh, but always in my mind, I, I had wonder about the, the big questions of, uh, of existence, uh, of human existence, human sentience, uh, the structure of the universe, uh, what it's all about. Uh, from your perspective, as, as your career has developed, what, what are the kinds of big ultimate questions that you've dealt with and how do you see those continuing to develop? The most fundamental question is, are we alone? Uh, and it has two flavors uh, in terms of primitive life. Is there primitive life out there, single cell organisms, or intelligent life? That would be even more exciting. Uh, obviously, we'd like to find evidence for it on the surface of a planet. Uh, but it would be even more exciting if we find evidence for intelligent technological civilization by uh, seeing the signals from a passing spacecraft uh, with our telescopes. Um, another important question is what's the nature of dark matter? Uh, what is it made of? Is it some new type of particles? Is it maybe black holes? Uh, perhaps gravity is modified in a way that we haven't anticipated and there is no other matter out there. Um, another fundamental question is what is the nature of the dark energy, the, this uh, mass density of the vacuum that creates this uh, accelerated expansion of the universe and whether it will decay in the distant future or are we doomed uh, to remain lonely just our galaxy sitting in vast uh, darkness in the distant future. Because the continuing expansion of the universe, uh, accelerating, driven by the dark energy, the density of empty space, as it were. That's right. Now, there is a risk uh, staying this way because, in principle, um, uh, there could be a lot of things happening in our vicinity and uh, potentially we could get killed by some catastrophic event, it would be nice if we could, to, to, to maintain the longevity of, of humanity, if we could spread ourselves first beyond the solar system and then perhaps beyond the galaxy to another galaxy that will accelerate away from our region of space. So then if we are doomed to die at some point, at least we will have some relatives <laughs> in other parts that are causally disconnected from our region of space-time that would survive. Um, to do that, we need to develop the technology that allows us to transfer our uh, uh, knowledge, information, genetics elsewhere. And that's the next fundamental question that I would pose. Can we do that? Can we actually spread uh, and uh, enhance the longevity of our species. Uh, and I think that's a very important long-term uh, problem that our civilization, unless uh, confronting it, uh, is doomed to disappear uh, because the sun will die within seven billion years and um, the earth would freeze, uh, if not engulfed before then by the envelope of the red giant that the sun will become. Um, then there are questions that have to do uh, with us as uh, biological creatures. Uh, is there anything after death? Uh, you know, Epicorus uh, said that he's not afraid of, of death because whenever he is around, death is not around and vice versa. So he will never meet death and therefore there is nothing to fear from. Um, but it's really interesting to ask. Um, is there anything remaining? Is there anything beyond just our physical reality? Of course, writing scientific papers is one way to leave something off yourself, or having this, this interview is, is another way where there will be an electronic record of us conversing uh, that other people will enjoy in the distant future, even after we die. Uh, it's to, to realize your vision of humanity, in some sense, extending beyond the galaxy is a is a, an ultimate vision beyond which most science wouldn't, wouldn't even go that far. To get to the nearest star is, is, is a monumental uh, a conception and, and, and seeming, seemingly extremely difficult. And then 
our galaxy itself, a hundred thousand light years, light years, is just seems incredible. What would it take to get beyond the galaxy and to escape, to have an escape from the galaxy to, to where you live? What would it? What, what so would so it let take? me give you some numbers. Uh, in this Starshot project, we are aiming to launch a spacecraft that weighs roughly a gram. Uh, electronics. This is to go to the, the, the to nearest, the nearest star. star. Right, right. Uh, the Alpha Centauri star system that has three and, stars. And, and you're doing it. a lot of them, a lot and of these little. A, a lot of these. Uh, the electronics can be miniaturized so that you have a camera, navigation device, communication device in a single gram. That's amazing. Uh, which is the guts of, of a cell phone. Yeah. Um, and you need to give that little mass the same amount of energy necessary for a liftoff of the space shuttle so that it gets to 20% of the speed of light uh, over a few minutes. <laughs> so it's a monumental effort to launch a few grams to 20% the speed of light. Yeah. Uh, you need a, a, a giant laser that we don't currently have. Uh, however, uh, once you demonstrate that you can do that, you can dream bigger. There, you can use nature. Uh, to benefit uh, such a, 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 a trip. Um, for example, um, when two black holes get close to each other in the center of a galaxy as a result of a merger of two galaxies, they uh, kick stars out of the system yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can kick stars at speeds that reach the speed of light. So in fact, we wrote a paper about it it turns out that there is a population of stars roaming through the universe at a fraction of the speed of light that were ejected from galaxies by the slingshot effect oh. when two black holes oh. kick oh. them out. Oh, yeah. And if you happen to live on a planet around one, a star like that, then it's the journey of your lifetime <laughs> because you're starting at the center of a galaxy and then you are carried away by this relativistic star from the center to the edge of the galaxy and beyond. And this is an opportunity to visit other galaxies along the way. Yeah. And so, in principle, some civilizations may be very lucky. Nature may provide them a free ride, uh, which otherwise is extremely difficult to manufacture artificially using technology. Right, and, and so in that case, the star would be kicked out and you'd be on a habitable planet around that star. Exactly. So that whole star system would be would be kicked out. Exactly. And so, if, if a, a future humanity would plan on a, on a on a, a, a habitable planet to to go to, that might be a choice that you could predict that in certain thousand years, million years, that would be one of the ones kicked out to protect from the galaxy. That's right. It depends how ambitious you are. If you want to reach a fraction of the speed of light, then that environment would be the best. Uh, two black holes and the slingshot effect. If you want to reach a tenth of a percent of the speed of light, you can do that with double star systems. Oh. Uh, just order of magnitude, how many years of technological advancement would you think it would take to get to where a civilization would have that capacity? Uh, my guess is that the technology needed to launch a gram to a fraction of the speed of light yeah. will be, in principle, developed over decades. Uh, then launching much more than a gram uh, would take centuries, but much less than a billion years. Uh, okay. And so there must be civilizations out there that had the time to master these technologies. And potentially, they are moving throughout the galaxy and in between galaxies. Okay.